I've got two LG G6s to unbox, one silver, one's black. Let's see which one looks better, which one you might like better, but also just a first-hand experience, my first impressions and all that fun stuff. Man, this is a good feeling. This is the new season, the 2017 season of smartphones. We got the big hitters coming our way. We got the G6 and the Galaxy S8 on the way. I can't wait to see what the experience is gonna be like. I've got high hopes for both devices coming out. But first and foremost, let's get to the G6 first. All right, so here we go. We got the two G6s here. So let's go ahead and get these unboxed. On the right hand side, we've got the silver edition. We'll put both devices off to the side for just a moment. And then we got our black. Here's our charging brick. And I like it when they have the USB cord coming out from the side versus the top, just in case you have it against the wall or something like that. It just tends to work better for me when they're off to the side. Side note that you might not care about, but it's something that I actually kind of care about. It's just nice to see things with USB-C. I know it's pretty much what needs to be the standard, but there's still devices out there that are not USB-C just yet. Got a little baggie for our SIM card tool, and I'll need that in just a second, because I've been using the Google Pixel for the last few weeks now since I switched over to it from the iPhone 7 Plus, and I'm really looking forward to having a big screen again. And that's pretty much it that comes in the box. Now obviously it's going to be the same kind of materials on the other box and so no need to undo that one. You are going to notice that they have a pre-installed screen protector so you might want to keep that on just in case you're going to put another screen protector on. That way it just avoids any kind of dust that could get on the screen before installing. I can't stand it when they put these stickers on the back of devices. What the crap? All right, so for my first major complaint is that that MEI number sticker it leaves this horrible residue right there. So that's gonna suck to try to get off, but it's gonna have to stay there for the moment until I can clean it off. That's, ugh, that's ugly. They should not do that stuff. On this side, we're gonna have our SIM card tray and also our SD card tray. Up at the top, we have a headphone jack, a microphone. It's too bad there's no IR blaster. That kind of sucks because the V20 had it and I know it's useful for some people. I know it's not like a widely used thing as much anymore but it's definitely nice to have. We got our volume rockers on the side. Down here at the bottom, we got another microphone, our USB connection, and our speakers. There appears to be some kind of sticker here too. Yep, they got some little stickies on the bottom too. It's actually gonna be on the sides altogether. So that's something that you might wanna take note of when getting this. And the stickers are not removing that well. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm gonna have to clean it off later. And with that said, I'm just gonna leave these on until I can actually fully clean the device off. Let's take a look at the black one real quick. You can see that it's fully blacked out, which is really nice. It gives a nice stealth look, really clean and minimalistic. So the black looks pretty cool. I like it. Let's go ahead and get both of these powered on. The fingerprint reader is also the power button and it clicks. So you're gonna to wanna to hold it down and that's gonna get you all turned on. So both of these devices came within the 40% range of battery, so that's interesting. This is a Verizon review unit. The one that I purchased is the silver, and it looks like this one's already kind of set up. We can already get into this, but this one is taking a second. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pause the video, I'm gonna stop the video, put my SIM card into this one, so that way I can get through the activation part. While I got this one kind of booting up and all that, we can take a look at this one that already is ready to go. So we can swipe to unlock, you can add your fingerprint and things like that to unlock the device. But this is gonna be your main setup. You notice that there's no home button here. I wanna say that you can change that in settings, but if not, you know, Nova Launcher, all that kind of good stuff. You do have on-screen buttons. Your recents are over here on the right-hand side. You got a home button here, and then you're back. If you long press the home button, you get your Google Now features or Google Assistant. I am loving the size of the phone. Like it feels like the regular size of the G5 and like that line of devices, but it's not nearly the same footprint as what we have seen in the past. And you can see how much more space the screen has on the G6, which is just really cool to me. They definitely know how to use space correctly. We got this huge chin at the bottom on the Pixel. Up the top, you know, it's excusable because it has a speaker, camera, all that kind of stuff. But there's like none of that here on the G6. Let's bust out a big boy. This is the HTC U Ultra. 
they both have 5.7 inch screens. So I'm gonna kind of match up the screens top to bottom. And you can see that it's definitely, definitely so much smaller than the HTC U Ultra. You've got a bunch of bezel here. A lot of people are calling it wasted space, all that kind of fun stuff. But at least uh, the Ultra actually uses some of the space that the Pixel doesn't. You got a home button and also you got your back button and recent buttons down here that you can use. So I like that part about the Ultra. The Pixel is just nothing. Up at the top of the Ultra, you do have that second display that like with the V20 had, your camera, speaker, and things like that. I'm not saying it's the best design, but at least they are using this space. Here's the iPhone 6 Plus. It's not gonna be too much different from like the 7 and things like that. It's a 5.5 inch screen. Again, the footprint is just so much better. So much better. Now a little bit smaller device, which is the Honor 8, and you can see that it doesn't really dwarf it. It's not too far away from being about the same size. Something that I kind of find pretty cool is that this is a wallpaper. It's actually a photo that I took outside of an airplane on my way back from San Francisco from the Honor 8 launch. But anyways, the wallpaper matches that silver frame. It looks pretty cool to me, so this, I don't know, fun fact that I like. My G6 here is loading all the apps, so I'm just going to pretty much leave this one alone for pretty good part of the video and we're gonna switch on over to this black one because we can take a look at some more stuff. You got your widgets up here, which is a time widget. You can add some weather, so you just tap that. You got your search bar for Google. And you got some folders. You got Google folders here and it just kind of list out all your Google stuff. Play Store, email, calendar, and then some of your essentials like your phone, messaging, camera, gallery, and your browser. Swipe on over, you're gonna have some more apps, see what they think what our essentials are. Got quick memo messaging, goodness. So we got Verizon messaging and a messaging app from LG. I end up using Google Messenger, so that's probably what I'll end up using on my device. And so that's what we get here. We got a Verizon folder that's gonna be packed full of Verizon stuff. So let's go ahead and count off the bloatware that comes on it. So we got NFL, Slacker Radio, VZ Navigator, Caller ID, VZ Protect Cloud, and my Verizon. But these kind of are considered a bloatware as well. I kind of want those to be optional. And then again, we got the Verizon Messenger down here at the bottom. And that's what comes with it. And it's got a cool little animation here when it gets to the end of the screen, it kind of stretches the apps and bounces them back. And there's nothing over here on that side. Would have been cool if they had the Google Now cards. Let's check out the notification panel. We got our shortcuts up here at the top. Doesn't look like you can swipe over for extra ones but you can swipe down again to get to the rest of them and then swipe again for the rest of them in this view. They got that blue hint for some of the different kind of shades, like your brightness up here. I do like the brightness slider to be up there. I'm just gonna choose auto for now. It's better for looking at the video. Let's go into the settings and you just do that by the top gear icon. And they got some toggles for all this kind of stuff in different colors for the different setting options. So it shouldn't be too much different from what we've seen before. Pretty basic setup. Go to the about phone, and let's check out the software version. It's just 7.0. Last security patch level is March 1st, so that's pretty good. It's the latest security patch. Let's check out the camera, because the camera is always one of my favorite things that I look for in a device to see if it's gonna be good or not. And LG has a reputation of having good cameras. And we're not gonna turn that on. To test out the camera, I'm gonna use our Android bug over here. It's a plush toy. And it seems like it's pretty similar to what we've seen in the past. I like the autofocus. It's got a laser autofocus, which is awesome. And we do have the two dual cameras. So you got a wide view and then your normal view. And the autofocus seems to work pretty decent. I mean, it's not super fast, but it could be the subject that I'm using too. And if you want to switch over to that wide angle, you can just toggle that right there. Really easy. Snap a photo. Let's see how quick it does. Pretty quick. And you got different sharing options that pop up, which is something I like. If you want to switch over to video, it starts to record right away. So when you do switch over, that's how it's going to do that. And if you want to take a photo within the video, you can do that right there. So you can pause and stop the video. Let's check out all our settings. So we got photo size. I'm gonna go all the way to the best. 13 megapixels. Video resolution. It defaults to 16 by nine full HD. 
but I'm gonna bump it up to the highest it can go. Here's our different modes, pop out, auto, snap, panorama, slow-mo, 360 panorama, time-lapse, and food shots. We got our different filters, swap the camera around, flash, and then we got some auto features that drop down. So you got square, manual, and manual for video. So it's definitely a jam-packed camera app, which is one of the things that I like about LG. I like a lot of options in my camera. Just a few more thoughts before I wrap up the video. And one, definitely subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos about the G6 and anything else that I produce. I've got quite a few more videos planned to do with the G6. One, of course, is gonna be the full review. I've got case reviews. I might do a tempered glass screen protector one because what I'm noticing is that this is a fully flat screen. It doesn't have like that bubbled edge. I'm really thankful for that flat screen because if you take a look at this pixel, there's some really bad, probably the worst tempered glass screen protector setup I've ever had. I won't say ever, but it's definitely one of the worst that I've had because of that ghosting. It's pretty, pretty, pretty rough. I already ordered one, so I'm gonna see what it looks like, and then I'll definitely share with you in some way, form, or fashion, whether it's a blog post or a social media post. You'll definitely know what that screen protector is gonna look like on the G6, and if it's something that you're interested in getting. If you are interested, let me know down in the comments. I wanna hear your feedback, if that's something that you wanna see. Other than that nasty sticker on the back, it looks like a pretty awesome device. I love how small this is. Well, it's not small, but, just the form factor of the footprint is so much better than in the past. Like, I mean, come on. This HTC Ultra is ultra huge and it's got the same size screen, but the device is so much bigger and this is not. I've said in the past I like big phones, but what I really mean by that is that I like bigger screens. I'm not a big fan of LG's skin, so I'm probably gonna put at least Nova Launcher on it. See if there's any kind of themes that I can stick on it as well. I typically use SwiftKey or Google Keyboard as well. And the keyboard that I'm using right now, the stock one, is just okay. I might try to get to using it just to see what the experience is like, but I've tried and tried and tried to use stock keyboards other than Google's stock keyboard. And I just always tend to go back to either Google Keyboard or Swift Key. Both of those, like they're split down even to me. I used to be a huge proponent for SwiftKey, that's what I've liked, but Google Keyboard has come a long way in just in this last year. Make sure to follow me on all the social networks because I'll be posting different kinds of content and all that kind of stuff from the G6 itself, whether it's photos, videos, and just the different kind of things like that. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what the experience is gonna be like. And I can't wait to pair it up with my Gear S3. There's definitely two other videos that I'll do with the G6 and it's two new series that I just started and I started it with the HTC Ultra. You can check out those videos on the channel. One of the videos tests to see if it's a good vlogging camera. And the reason why I like to do that and the reason why I'm starting that is because one, if you are into getting into vlogging or if you just like to capture moments and stuff, you don't necessarily have to bring this big old camera, a DSLR, mirrorless camera, whatever it is, You've got some pretty good camera capabilities with these phones these days. So I wanna see what the stabilization is like, what the audio is like, just those all around features to see if it could actually replace a whole camera. I mean, get a gimbal, get a selfie stick of some sort for even more stabilization, and that could really set you up for a good vlogging camera. The other style of video is a cinematic video, and that's one I just released today. And I was really kind of nervous about it because this is stretching my abilities, trying to improve and trying to just like do different kind of content. And I wanna see if these phones that we're getting these days can really capture some really amazing footage. Of course, some editing comes involved when you're doing a cinematic kind of video, but either way, the camera still has to perform well. So be looking out for those videos coming out really soon. I can't wait to get to using this device as my daily driver so I can present to you guys my full experience about it and see if this is something that you think is worth getting or if you're just interested in what my opinion is of the G6. And just with that said, you know, I wasn't excited to get the G5 last year. I got, you know, a review unit. I was able to test it out. It just wasn't that impressive and pretty much wasn't impressive across the board for many people. But it really seems like LG has gotten back on track. They've got a water resistant device. The footprint is amazing. The screen looks great. The camera is pretty much always good on LG devices. So I really think that this is definitely a step in a better direction than what they've been in the past. Anyways, enough rambling on. This is time to end the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, follow me on the social networks, share this video with your favorite social networks. I really appreciate it when you guys do that. It helps out the channel tremendously. 
And until then, stay techie.